Hello, we're continuing with the Laws of Evil Speech. We're on chapter 10, halacha number 5. Uh, just, uh, we're not going to be doing this, I think, anymore every day, maybe like every other day or a few times a week. Uh, I've started some other shiurim and also the, um, so I think that would be better. Uh, but right now we are talking about the laws of Litoelis. Sometimes when it's allowed to speak Lashon Hara, and we mentioned that there were certain conditions. The case we've been talking about is when you see somebody else steal, let's say, an object from someone else, you're allowed to, uh, with under certain conditions, under seven conditions, which we uh, discussed, if you look back into uh, class number 10-2, chapter 10, uh, halacha number 2, we discussed what those seven conditions were. We'll go over it again uh, soon, God willing. So if you see someone stealing something of somebody else's, you're allowed to tell the person with those seven conditions who it happened to, uh, the one who was stolen from, you're allowed to tell him who stole so he can get his package back. Now we're going to discuss... <coughs> Another example of toelis, a situation where you're allowed to tell somebody Lashon Hara that was spoken about him. So, halacha number five. Let's say you see somebody, he's speaking Lashon Hara about somebody else. That is considered a sin that is between man and his fellow. Right? We said when you see somebody who uh, commits a sin, that's a sin between man and his fellow man, where he's damaging somebody else, uh, that you're allowed to... Uh, tell the person who uh, was the victim. Right? The other case, stealing. Stealing is obviously a sin which is between man and his fellow. Now when it comes if to sins between man and God, that's a different scenario, which uh, we discussed earlier and we'll get to uh, again. But here you see someone, he's speaking evil about somebody else. He's going around denigrating him to others. You're, uh, you're allowed to tell people about this evil person who's spreading gossip. It's if you have the seven conditions. You're allowed to say, to tell people, yeah, uh, John is a really bad guy. He goes around speaking Lashon Hara about Tom. And you're allowed to uh, denigrate John to people because he's doing a very bad sin by gossiping about Tom. And he writes, He says, you're only allowed to do that, though, if Tom, who was the one who was being spoken about, if he knows that John is going around speaking Lashon Hara. But if you don't, if Tom does not know, that John was going around speaking Lashon Hara, you are not allowed to denigrate John publicly. And the reason is, is because that's called, considered Rechilus, which will, God willing, we'll get to. Rechilus is when you go to Tom and you say, hey, Tom, did you know John was talking about you negatively? That is a Torah prohibition called Rechilus of, uh, of tail-bearing. So you're only allowed to uh, denigrate someone who's going around speaking Lashon Hara when you have the seven conditions which we mentioned. And two... You, um, Tom, the object, who Tom in our scenario, the object of who is being spoken about, uh, he is aware that he is being gossiped about. In that case, you are allowed to denigrate the one speaking the Lashon Hara. You can't tell Tom himself that someone speaking Lashon Hara about. So let's say, and if you see John going around speaking about Tom, you're not allowed to tell Tom that John was speaking about him. And even if the uh, one speaking is like a really bad guy, and he's a bum, and he's talking about one of the greatest rabbis of the generation, a very holy man, you're not even allowed to tell the great rabbi that uh, Tom was uh, speaking about him. That is what... Um, that is what the uh, Chavetz Chaim here says. Let me see this for one second. Okay. Let's uh, go on. However, sometimes you are allowed, we just said earlier that you're not allowed to speak Lashon Hara, 
Uh, you're not allowed to denigrate someone who was going around speaking Lush and Har about somebody else. If the object of the person, if the person who is being spoken about doesn't know about it. However, there are some times when even if the person doesn't know about it, you are allowed to talk badly about the one who is speaking Lush and Har. So again, our scenario. John is saying really nasty things about Tom, and Tom has no idea. So he said you're not allowed to uh, denigrate John because Tom doesn't know. However, there is a situation which we're going to discuss where you could denigrate John even though Tom doesn't know. If it's going to prevent uh, damage from Tom, let's say through John's speech something bad is going to happen to Tom, then you're allowed to blast John and tell everyone how bad he is. But you need the seven conditions. Now he's going to explain. I'm going to explain it. The Chavetz Chaim says so nobody makes a mistake. Go on. What's the case? Shehu makir b'teva ha'isha roichel. You know this guy, John. You know that he goes around gossiping about people, and he's going around. It's his mission now, just to tell everybody how bad Tom is. Lufia inyan asipor shekemoshu who megana osol befanav kenya lechacha kachumenav yigno so od bifnei anashim acherim. So you know that he went to tell you, and to tell uh, your friends how bad Tom is. And now John, you know, is going to go to other people and continue to denigrate Tom. Ubefrat. And let's say you told Tom, you know, you got you told John, sorry, to stop talking about Tom. And John is not listening to you. And we know that many, many people, almost everybody, uh, falls prey to the sin of Lashon Hara. Specifically listening to Lashon Hara. So he says, the case is like this. John, you know, is going to go continue telling people how bad Tom is. Tom has no idea that anyone's speaking about him. You told John, you got to stop. Stop doing this. It's not right. And you know John is going to go to other people. So what should you do? You should go to those other people before John and say, you know what? John is about to say something very nasty about Tom, and you just shouldn't believe it because John's a really bad guy, and uh, don't listen to anything he has to say. Because usually people, the first person they listen to in a fight, the Chavetz Chaim says, that's who they believe. So it is important that you go and tell these other people before John gets there. And you should say how bad John is. You should tell them, you know, John is such a, a, a jerk. He's going around uh, saying bad things about Tom. Uh, so now it's going to happen. John's going to get there, and John's going to start saying bad things about Tom. And the people are going to say, oh, oh, it's you. Yeah, we heard about you. We're not going to listen to anything you have to say. Not only that, they're not going to listen to what John has to say. They're going to start uh, uh, rebuking him. Say, oh, John, what, you're, you're, you're such a bad guy. We heard about you. You know, you go around speaking Lush and Har. you got to stop. It's uh, it's not befitting. He says through here, sorry I was reading Hebrew fast, but I'll translate it. He says that, and it will be a very good thing, by you telling the people and warning them that John is about to come to speak Lashon Hara about Tom, the people are going to rebuke John, and John next time is definitely going to think twice before he goes around spreading this Lashon Hara about Tom because of... Uh, the response that he got, maybe he'll even do tshuva, he'll repent. But for sure, you know, if, if you just let evil people do what they want to do, and you don't say anything, you don't rebuke them, uh, they are going to continue doing it. But here, you went and warned them what's going to happen. And now when John comes, there's a very uh, strong likelihood that not only are they going to rebuke John, they're going to, uh, I'm sorry, not only are they not going to listen to John, but they're going to rebuke him and yell at him, and next time John will think twice. So that is definitely... A, uh, a toelis. It's definitely a, uh, a purpose of why you should do it. So just to summarize so far, and then we'll, we'll just to summarize so far what we said. Uh, one is that if someone is speaking Lashon Har about somebody else, it is permitted to denigrate him if the person who is being spoken about knows about it. And it's when you have the seven conditions. And again, just review uh, its intent to what those seven conditions are. And in a case where even the person who is being spoken about doesn't know that someone's gossiping about him, if by you spreading the information about the gossiper, it'll save the one being gossiped about from any damage, then you are allowed 
to uh, spread that information without the uh, without the um, once you have those seven conditions, even if the object doesn't know about it. And we mentioned before that. Uh, Oh, someone asked here uh, if sharing Facebook posts could be considered Lushan Hara. Absolutely. Uh, sharing Facebook posts is, are definitely Lushan Hara if uh, it's denigrating somebody. Uh, the reason, and it's even worse because you're doing it publicly. And we mentioned before that when you speak Lushan Hara publicly, that is much, much worse than just doing it uh, between one person, especially the way the internet is now. Everything gets. Uh, you know, everything gets shared to everyone else. Now, you have to be very careful if you're sharing negative information on Facebook that you have to fulfill these seven conditions which we are talking about. Um, and that uh, you should definitely uh, speak to somebody who knows these laws well, a rabbi or spiritual advisor, but sharing negative information on Facebook is uh, definitely would be Lashon Hara if it doesn't meet these uh, requirements. And just one more thing I forgot to mention, we said that you're not if, if there's a person going around gossiping about a Torah scholar, you are not allowed to, if the Torah scholar doesn't know about it, you're not allowed to tell him. But what you are allowed to do, he says here in the Bar Ma'im Chaim, is you are allowed to tell other people in order to protest for the honor of Torah. Uh, it's a very important thing. If someone denigrates Torah or Torah scholars, one has to protest. So while you shouldn't tell the Torah scholar itself, it seems, you are allowed to tell others so that they protest uh, to the disgrace of Torah that's being done by this person. And uh, just make sure that in all these cases we have the seven conditions, and if you want a review of what they are, you can feel free to email me or message me. I hope everybody has a beautiful day.